Hey, what's going on? Weavers, Tim here again. And in today's video, we are making a paracord leather and titanium camera strap. As you can see, the main part of the strap is comprised of the paracord. We've got some nice leather accents on here, as well as titanium split rings. So this project came out beautifully. And for all you photographers out there, pay attention, take some notes because we're about to get into it. For this project, we are using a substantial amount of paracord, of course. Also, I'm using four to five ounce leather, which I sourced from OA Leather Supply. And of course, I've got the titanium split rings. Links for everything will be down below. So very simply, I'm gonna measure out all the paracord I will need. And tying snake knots with this amount of paracord can be quite time consuming, so do be prepared for that. Now, once I've got my amount of cord I need, I'm just gonna, of course, send you off that end that I cut. And the first step will be, of course, to attach my paracord to my split ring. This is a stainless steel split ring. I did switch them out uh, midway through the project. So I'm gonna start off with the midpoint of all my cord. I'm just gonna loop it through the split ring and then I'm gonna grab the running ends and pull those through the loop as if I'm doing a cow's hitch and pull all that cord through. And once you've got that through, I'm going to do the sling stone hitch. So the right side strand, I'm gonna pull that through the front of the cow's hitch loop. See how it went from the back to the front? I'm going to do the same on the other side. So the left side cord, I'm going to pull that from the back through the front and cinch up that slingstone hitch. You could just do a regular cow's hitch if you want, but I feel like the slingstone hitch does stay in place a lot more easily. From here, I'm going to tie a single snake knot. I'm going to take the left side strand, do a counterclockwise loop around the right side strand. And from there, I'm going to take the right side strand and I'm going to move it to the left side, bring it around the front and put it through that first loop you created and pull all the cord through. And then from there, I'm going to cinch up that first snake knot. And we are going to be using the Tibetan method to tie these snake knots because I do find it a lot faster. So we've got that first snake knot tied up. And now from there, I'm going to hold my paracord in this fashion. I'm going to loosen that first snake knot. And that would be on the left side based on the orientation that I'm holding it at. I'm going to open up that first loop and ensure that you tied your first snake knot the same way I did. So now with the cord that's resting on my left index finger, I'm gonna wrap it around my index finger and bend it through that loop up top and pull all the cord through. For the beginning of this bracelet, a majority of your work is pulling all that excess cord through. I'm gonna line it up next to that cord around my finger and then I'm gonna pull the first snake knot shut with the opposite cord. I'm going to remove my index finger, give the entire thing a clockwise turn. And again, now I have the cord around my index finger. I'm going to wrap it around once, place it on the right side of that cord, pull all the excess through, and I'm going to hold it in place with my middle finger while I pull on the opposite cord, to close that next snake knot. Okay, and that is the process. So again, rotate kind of away from you. Have that loop up top and use your index and middle finger to hold that cord. Wrap it around once, bend it through the top loop, pull all the excess through, hold it in place once again with your middle finger and pull on the opposite cord to close the next snake knot. So this is why the Tibetan snake knot method is so useful in this situation because you have so much cord and once you get that rhythm down, um, it's actually uh, quite fast. And just to show you again once more with some shorter cord, uh, I've continued to weave my snake knot to my desired length. And I'm just showing you these last few knots again with that same Tibetan method. It's very fast and very simple and um, you can even do it you know, with your eyes closed, which is so great about this method of tying. So you're going to continue this Tibetan method of tying these snake knots until you've reached your desired length. And now that I've come down to the end of my snake knot, I've tied as much strap as I need. I'm just going to close off the last snake knot like so. Okay, so just pull that last loop shut once you have enough snake knot. So now to attach our second keyring, I'm using the proper titanium keyring here. 
course I'm going to switch the first one. I'm going to put the left side cord through the front of the key ring and the right side cord from the back to the front. So they're kind of coming on opposite sides of the, the split ring. The right side cord will now wrap around everything like so, going uh, in a counterclockwise direction. Now from there, the left side cord wraps around the front and it'll go through the loop that the opposite cord created at the very back of the snake knots, like so. So we're just tying a snake knot once again. We're going sort of back the way we came to finish this off. So we've tied that once. And let me show you one more time a little bit closer. I did cut my cords a little short, so um, you can probably stop a bit sooner so you have a bit more cord to work with. But as you can see, the cord wraps around the front and goes behind the opposite cord to complete that snake knot. So I tied three snake knots to finish this one off and they did get a little bit short, but I was able to finish off those three snake knots. So everything is nice and secure and it's definitely not coming out. So now from here, we're just going to clip off our excess cords. So uh, yeah, just cut them off, leave about a quarter of an inch and definitely don't cut them too close to the snake knot. And of course, I'm going to melt it with my jet lighter and press down on it with my knotter's tool. And of course, I'm going to do that for both sides. So there we have our snake knot portion complete. And of course, here's the original end. As you can see, I did switch it out for the um, titanium split ring. Next, I'm going to cut out my leather pattern for my leather ends. And um, all I did was I traced out my pattern with my scribe onto the leather. And now I'm just cutting it out with my ruler and X-Acto knife. So I am by no means a leather crafting expert, of course. Um, so take all of my advice with a grain of salt. I'm just showing you how I did it. And this is based on, you know, various videos that I've watched on YouTube. I'm sure there are much more experienced uh, leather crafters out there that have uh, better ways of accomplishing what I'm about to do. So I've got my first piece cut out. It's just a simple rectangle. Next, I'm going to cut out two triangular notches in the middle of the, that rectangle on the sort of lengthwise sides. And of course, I cut out two separate pieces because I have two ends. So I cut out those two angled pieces, kind of like little triangles out on both sides. And that's what I have. Next, I've got my leather creaser and I'm just um, putting a little guideline here for where I want to punch my uh, stitching holes. So it's just a little um, device that allows you to set your measurement and then you can crease a line down the side of the leather as a guideline for where to punch your um, stitching holes. And for this step, I creased my leather about three millimeters in. Next, following those crease lines, I'm going to use my pricking irons and I'm going to uh, punch the stitching holes in my leather. So if you do live uh, you know, in an apartment or condo, if you're surrounded by people, you might want to do this step definitely before 11 p.m. as to not annoy your neighbors. So I punched my stitching holes down those uh, lines that I creased out earlier. And I'm going to do this for all four sides on both pieces of leather. So as you can see, the leather pieces are just about ready. They do have some scratches and scuffs on them as well as the tracing lines. So I'm just going to take some Smith's leather balm and I'm going to condition the leather. You can always do this um, after, but I guess it's a bit easier while the leather is nice and flat here. And I'm just going to um, apply it with my hands. Uh, this leather balm is all natural, so you don't have to worry about it um, getting on your fingers or whatnot. And I'm just going to uh, liberally apply a small amount uh, as evenly as possible all over the uh, leather pieces. It does darken the leather quite a bit upon first application, but uh, as the balm absorbs, uh, the leather will begin to lighten back up to its original color, but it will be a bit darker, as you can see. So I've got both pieces nice and conditioned now. Next, I've got my edge beveler. This is a size two beveler, but I think a one or there might even be a zero, but a one or zero is probably good enough. Uh, two is a small size I could find. And I'm just going to bevel the edges of where I'm going to do my stitching. So um, this kind of puts a nice angle on that edge there, removes that sharp corner of where the leather was cut. And this allows you to burnish your edges um, a lot better. And it will prevent the edges sort of mushrooming out 
as you um, sand them and burnish them down. So I'm just going to do this to all four edges. And overall, it does make the sort of finished leather pieces look a lot better. So I've got my leather pieces ready and I'm just going to sort of bend them through the split ring like so. And you're going to see, you can see how they're going to sit against the paracord. And now because I'm not stitching the leather into the paracord, which I really should have done, um, I just went with the option of using this Gorilla Glue contact cement. And it's very strong, so I don't have any um, worries about it coming apart. And I'm going to put a bit of the Gorilla Glue on both sides. And ideally, you want to let the glue sort of dry for like a minute or two before you press them down. I'm going to close up those leather ends around the paracord. And this will definitely help, of course, keeping everything in place while I stitch. And of course, I'm just going to use a uh, little clip here to hold it in place while it dries and cures. And of course, I did this for both sides. So I've got some gray waxed thread here. This came with the kit that I bought all my leather tools with. I will have a link down below for that. And the amount you want to use is, um, I would say to be safe, about five or six times the amount of stitching you need to do. So I'm just going to thread it through my needle, as you can see here. And then I'm going to take the tip of the needle and pass it through the end of the thread. And that's how we're going to anchor this needle to that thread. And of course, I'm going to do this for both sides because uh, we are using the saddle stitch to um, stitch these leather pieces together. So my glue has dried and uh, for a bit more added security, I'm just going to add a little bit more of the rubber cement just on the inner edge here. Um, once we stitch up the sides of the leather, that should create a bit more contact and um, these leather pieces should definitely not slip or move from the paracord. Now I'm going to get my ends set up on my stitching pony here and I'm just going to have the edge of the leather come out up top and clamp that down. Now I'm going to start my saddle stitch to join the leather pieces. So I'm going to start from the second stitch hole in using my multi-tool here to pull the thread through. It's a bit tight and I've got equal amounts of cord on both sides and with the right side thread, I'm going to go back through that first stitch hole and uh, this is what's called back stitching and I'm going to do this to secure the thread in before I make my way down the uh, rest of the edge. And with that same right side thread that went from the right to the left, I'm going to bring it back from the left to the right. So we kind of have a uh, closed loop here on the end. I'm going to pull that tight. And now um, I'm going to take the right side strand, go back through the second hole, back to the left side. And now the left side strand is going to go through that second stitch hole from the left to the right. And once again, pull that tight. And now we can start the saddle stitch doing that same method. The right side strand goes from the right to the left. And now the left side strand goes from the left side to the right. And they're just going to sort of crisscross back and forth going down my edge here. This is what's called the saddle stitch. So I've made my way all the way to the other side. And now the threads are going to cross over at the very back there around the outer edge of the leather. And now that strand that was on the left is going to go back through that, that last hole from the right to the left. And the strand on the right that looped around to the left side is going to go through the last hole from the left to the right. So pull all that thread through, pull that last knot nice and tight. And I'm going to do one more back stitch. So the strand that's on the right is going to go th through the second last hole from the right to the left. And the left side strand is going to go through the second last hole from the left to the right. So from here, I can clip off my excess thread. Okay, I'm going to leave just about an eighth of an inch and melt it with my lighter. And of course, as always, be careful doing this part. You don't want to burn that nice leather that you've uh, stitched onto the paracord. I'm going to do that for both sides. And I'm just using a scrap piece of leather to press down on that melted end. So that was one side. And now I'm going to just repeat the exact same process on the opposite side. To do the exact same thing, start off with that back stitch, do the saddle stitch all the way down the one side. And at the very end, again, secure it with another back stitch. 
And with the other side done, I can clip off my excess thread. Just give it a little melt with the lighter as usual and press down on it with that scrap piece of leather. And of course I did this two more times on the opposite leather end. So now to finish those leather edges, they're pretty even, but I'm just gonna sand them down a little bit with this uh, file here. And I'm only going in one direction. If this was a uh, vegetable tan leather, it would be, uh, I wouldn't be so concerned about that. And to sort of burnish and compact down those fibers, I'm just gonna use a bit of water. Um, you can use, you know, there's a lot of different methods to do this. You can use uh, gum trag or tokenol or um, other mediums like that, but I find water works just fine in certain situations. And lastly, I'm just going to put a bit of brown edge coat on those leather edges. Uh, again, completely optional. This is just the method I'm choosing to finish the leather edges. And I'm just going to use my scribe here and sort of roll on a bit of that uh, edge coat and sort of paint those edges. And I'm actually going to put more than one coat. Um, I will apply one coat. It dries relatively quickly and um, I might even do a little bit of sanding with some fine sandpaper in between coats and it will get, give those edges a nice seal and prevent those um, leather fibers from ever you know, coming loose. And there we have it. There is our paracord snake knot camera strap with leather ends and titanium rings. So I know this was a bit of a longer process, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope you also enjoyed the leather part of the video, something new I haven't really done on this channel. And uh, yeah, I've been getting into the leather stuff, been enjoying it very much. So expect a bit more of that. And as always guys, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you guys want access to exclusive videos as well as our Discord, feel free to join my Patreon page. Feel free to consider joining my Patreon page to support this channel directly. And if not, you can always support this channel by liking and commenting on this video. Hope you liked this video, and if you enjoyed what I did, feel free to check out what I have to offer on the rest of my channel.